there. Welcome to today's lesson. We, in our previous lesson, we looked at the measurements, the introduction to measurements, and we looked at some of the systems that were used in measurement. So today we want to look at perimeter and we simply start by defining what a perimeter is. When, for instance, you need to make a fence for your garden, then it means you need to know the distance around the given garden. You need to make a frame for your photo, then it means you need to know the measurements of your frame, the distance around the photo so that you know which measurement, which length is required for your frame. So what do we mean by perimeter? So perimeter simply refers to the distance around a two-dimensional shape. So you are having the distance outside the two-dimensional shape. So when you are covering that distance around the two-dimensional shape, then whatever you are simply covering is what is known as perimeter. Perimeter is denoted by So when we see the letter P, then it simply means that we are required to find the perimeter around the outside of any two-dimensional shape. So we are going to look at perimeter of various figures that we have and try and find out how do we go about the perimeter of the given figures. It is important to note that when you are having sides that have the same marking, for instance, if I have the same markings on the sides, I have maybe this is side A and this is side B, and they have the same markings such that, for instance, here we have the two lines that are marked on that side, we have also two lines that are marked on that side. So we are having the same markings on the two lines. So this same marking simply means that the length of the given sides are equal. It simply means that A is equal to B. So whenever you come across a figure that has markings on it, then it is important to note that the sides of the sides that have the same markings are equal so this simply means that side a is equal to side b so we want to find the perimeter of various figures So the first shape we have, or the question we are supposed to tackle is, we find the perimeter of the shapes that you are going to draw. And the first shape we have is a triangle. And this triangle has the sides 3 centimeter, 5 centimeter, and 7 centimeters. We need to find the perimeter. We are simply saying that perimeter is the distance around the outside of the given figure. So we are finding perimeter of this triangle. So meaning if I have my sides, this is side A, B, and C. So if those are the sides of that given triangle and I need to find the perimeter of that triangle, then it means perimeter will be obtained by A, plus b plus c. So we are simply adding the values that we have on the triangle and the values we have are
So remember the units, depending with whatever units you are working with, in this case we are working with centimeters. So we are simply adding the sides such that we have 3 plus 5 plus 7 and 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 plus 7 gives us 15 centimeters. So the perimeter of this triangle is simply 15 centimeters. The distance round. So it means I'm starting from a point and coming back to the same point. So if I'm starting from this point, going round, that is the first length, which is three centimeters, moving to the other end, that is seven centimeters, then we are coming back to the starting point, which gives us the five centimeter length. So that is the perimeter of that given triangle. So we have the figure and we are required to find the perimeter of the given figure. So this means we get the distance around this given figure and it is simply being obtained by adding the distances that we have. So if I have to start from this point, then it means from this point to this end we have 5 meters. So that will mean I have 5 plus we are moving from this point to the other end that is 10 meters then plus moving from this end to that end we have 8 then from this end to that point we have another 8 then finally going back to the original place we have 6 so perimeter is simply the distance around the figure and we are simply adding whatever we have. So we have 5 plus 10, which gives us 50. 15. 15 plus 8. 15 plus 8 should give us 23. Then we have 23 plus 8, which gives us 31. And 31 plus 6 will give us 37. Then keep in mind that we have to indicate our units and the units we are having in each case are meters. So it means our perimeter is 37 meters. So we have the next figure. The two opposite sides are equal, so we find that this side is equal to that because it has the same marking. Remember we said that the sides that have the same marking are equal. So this side and this side have the same marking, showing that they are equal. This side and this side have the same marking, indicating that they are equal. So which figure is this? This is simply a rectangle, a figure that has two opposite sides equal then we are talking about a rectangle the angles are 90 degrees so it means whatever figure we have is a, a rectangle so if this side is equal to this and this side we've been given is 10 kilometers then it also means that this side is also 10 kilometers we have five we have five kilometers here so this means this is five kilometers so meaning for us to get the perimeter of this given figure we have 5 plus 10 plus 5 plus 10, which gives us 5 plus 10 is 15. 15 plus 5 is 20. 20 plus 10 gives us 30 kilometers. That is the first option we have. Alternatively, we are talking about a rectangle. And being a rectangle, we know that a rectangle has the length and the width. So we can apply the formula whereby we are talking about the formula of finding perimeter of a rectangle is given by 2 into length plus width. So 2 into the length plus the width. In that 
we are having 10 and 5 as our length and width. So we simply add 10 plus 5 multiplied by 2. So we have the option of first simplifying whatever is in the brackets, then multiplying by what is outside the bracket, or alternatively we use the distributive law whereby we multiply whatever is outside the bracket with everything inside the bracket. So we can just simplify so that we have 10 plus 5 gives us 15, then 15 multiplied by 2 should give us 30 kilometers. So those are the options we have in calculating the area of a rectangle. We can either decide to add, sim because we've simply said that perimeter is obtained by the distance. Perimeter is the distance around the outside of this given shape. So we can simply just get the distance around the shape by simply adding whatever digits we have. Or alternatively, we can apply the formula whereby we are saying perimeter of a rectangle is given by 2 into length plus width. So that we are having the distance or the distance around this given figure or the perimeter of the figure as 30 kilometers. So we have another figure and this figure we are now having all the four sides having the same marking. All the four sides having the same marking simply indicates that the four sides of this given figure is, uh, the four sides of the given figure are equal. So meaning, whatever figure I have is a square. Being a figure that has the four sides equal, the angle is 90 degrees, then it means the figure I have is a square. So how do we go about it? We are saying that the markings simply indicate that all the four sides are equal. We've been given one of the length, which is 2.5. And since all the four sides are equal, then it simply means all the sides are 2.5 centimeters. So this will be 2.5 centimeters. This one is 2.5 centimeters. This is 2.5 centimeters. Then we are finding the perimeter, the distance around the outside of the shape, which will give us 2.5 plus 2.5 plus 2.5, then plus 2.5. So we are adding the 2.5 repeatedly four times. So that means we have 2.5 plus 2.5 gives us 5. 2, 5 plus 2.5 will give us 7.5. Then we have 7.5 plus 2.5, which will give us 10. That is one of the options that we can use. Alternatively, we are now discovering that we are adding the 2.5 repeatedly four times. When we are adding the same number repeatedly four times, then it simply means it is the number multiplied by 4. So this means that perimeter of a square can also be obtained by 4 times the length of the given square. So if our length is 2.5, then it means we have 4 times 2.5. And 4 times 2.5 will give us 10 centimeters. So we have the two options that you can either just decide to go through the addition, but we all know that repeated addition simply means multiplication. So instead of going through the repeated addition, you can have the option of multiplying the length by 4. So we are having another figure to find its perimeter. All we've been told that all the corner angles are equal. Then what we've been given, we have nine kilometers. We have three kilometers, we have six kilometers as the lengths that are representing 
the sides of that given shape. So how do we get the perimeter of this shape? So the three kilometers on this side will be equal to the three kilometers on the other end. Six kilometers here will be equal to the six kilometers on the other end. Then we are talking about nine kilometers here. The nine kilometers is supposed to cover this distance from here to this point. At the same time, we have this point to that point, then we have this point to that point. So this, the whole of this distance on this side, on the upper side of the shape, if we combine these distances that we have, if I have this is maybe I label this point A, this is point B, this is C, D, then we have E and F. If those are the sides, then it means AB plus CD plus EF should give me a total of nine kilometers. So I'll have the nine kilometers here, then I have the nine kilometers that will bring about the combination on the other end so that we have the distance around the given figure. So can we get the perimeter of this given figure? We are having So we have 3 plus 9 plus 3 plus 6 plus 6. Then you are talking about the combination of the small units. The small lengths should add up to 9 kilometers. So plus the 9 kilometers that is giving us the combination of these lengths that we do not have. So that means that 3 plus 9 is 12. 12 plus 3 is 15, 15 plus 6 is 21, 21 plus 6 is 27, 27 plus 9 gives us 36. 36 kilometers. So we have a question that a grazing paddock is to be fenced on all sides. It is rectangular in shape with length of 242 meters and breadth of 186 meters. If fencing costs $25 per meter, we are supposed to find the cost of fencing that is required. So what do we do? The first thing, if this paddock is being fenced on all sides, there is no side that is being left. So we are simply getting the distance around the given grazing paddock. So whatever we are simply doing is getting the perimeter of the given Paddock. We are being told that our paddock is rectangular in shape. So we can just make a sketch of that given paddock. Being rectangular in shape, it means that the two opposite sides are equal. So the length of this paddock is 242 meters. The breadth is 186 meters. So we had the options that when we are having a rectangle, we can decide to add around the given figure or use the, fo the formula whereby we are saying perimeter is obtained by 2 into the length plus breadth or width, whichever we 
it means the same thing, the breadth or the width of that given rectangle. So we are having 242 plus 186 multiplied by 2. So 242 plus 186, we have 242 plus 186, 2 plus 6 is 8, 4 plus 8 is 12, write 2, carry 1, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. So this gives us 242 plus 186 is 428, then we multiply by 2. When we multiply by 2, then we have 16, 4 plus 1, 5, then 8 meters. So it means the perimeter of this given figure is 856 meters. That is just the perimeter. Then we are asked for the cost of fencing, and we've been told that 25 dollars per meter. So for every meter it costs $25. So we are having a total of 856 meters. We need to know how much will it cost. So this is what you are saying, that one meter costs $25. What about 856 meters? So we cross multiply and that will mean we have 856 multiplied by 25. So we are going through the multiplication algorithm. So we go through the multiplication algorithm to find the required answer. That means 6 times 5 will give us 30. So we write 0 carry 3. 5 times 5 is 25. 25 plus 3 is 8. Carry 2. Then 5 times 8 is 40. 40 plus 2 gives us 42. 2 times 6 is 2 times 6 is 12. So write 2, carry 1. 2 times 5 is 10 plus 1 gives us 11. Then 2 times 8 is 16. 16 plus 1 is 17. So when we add, what we have is 0, 10, carry 1, then this is 4, we have 11 and 2. So write 1, carry 1, so that gives us 21, 400, the units that we are having are dollars. So in short, to fence 856 meters of our grazing paddock will cost us $21,400. So the next question we are having, a square painting of side length 30 centimeters is to be framed with the timber of width 5 centimeters. So we are to find the total length of timber required for the job. A square painting of side length 30 centimeters is to be framed with timber of width 5 centimeters. So we find the total length of timber required for the job. 
So total length of the timber required for the job. First thing we need to keep in mind, we have been told that it is a square. So a square is a figure that has all the four sides equal. So we draw a sketch of our square. So a square painting. Our square painting is of length 30 centimeters. We are saying that a square has all the four sides equal. Then it is to be fenced by a frame wood of the timber is of width five centimeters. So it is being fenced round, it framed round. So we are framing our painting and the width of the timber we are using is five centimeters. So the width we have is five centimeters. We need to get the length of the timber that is required in order to do the complete framing of our painting. So what does that mean? For us to get the perimeter of the given timber that is used for the fencing, we get the length of the outside of our given timber. We use the outside length. So we are having the length around on the outer length of our timber. So this means that if our painting is 30 centimeters, the timber we are using is of width 5 centimeters. So we have 5 centimeters on this side. We have another 5 centimeters on that side, which gives us a total of 10. So it means the outside of this given timber will be 30 plus 10. And 30 plus 10 is 40 centimeters. The same thing will happen on the other side because we are saying this is a square and a square has all the four sides equal. So this one will also be five, 40 centimeters. Then we get the perimeter. We say that a square, we add in the repeated, we are adding the given length repeatedly four times. So it simply means we multiply the length by four. So that means that perimeter of this given frame will be 40 multiplied by four, and 40 multiplied by four is 160 centimeters. So we get the length of the frame that is required to complete the, the length of the timber that is required to do the complete framing of our painting is 160 centimeters. So with that, I'm hoping that we can work out perimeters of given figures correctly. And perimeter is simply distance round any two dimensional figure. So we've looked at the figures that we have. So those figures that we've looked at we are required to get the perimeter of the figures and any other figure of similar kind. I'm hoping that we can be in a position to get the perimeter of that given figure. So I want us to move on and look at something else. The figures that we've been looking at are rectilinear figures. But now I want us to look at a circle and we need to get the distance round the given circle. How do we go about it? So this is a circle. So we are talking about pi and circumference of the given circle. So the first thing we need to do is understand what we mean by this term pi.
So the symbol for pi is that we are having that indicating that that is pi. And since long time ago, since the ancient times, we've all known that there is a figure that relates the circumference of the given circle and the diameter. So we are talking about a circle and I'm talking about some given terms that we need to understand about. We are talking about a circle. The first thing we are talking about, we've talked about the circumference of the circle. Circumference, what are we talking about? Circumference we are referring just to the distance round the given circle. So we are having this distance round the given circle is whatever we are referring to as the circumference. So we are talking about circumference and we are saying that circumference refers to distance. The distance around the circle. Then we are saying that pi is connecting circumference to the diameter. So we are having diameter. We need to know what do we mean by the diameter. When we are having a line that is dividing the given circle into two equal halves, we are having two equal halves that have divided this given circle, then we are referring to that as the diameter. So we have in diameter, and we are saying that diameter refers to the distance across the circle. So if this is the circle we are having from one point to the end of that given circle, then that is the diameter. And we are saying that the diameter will divide our circle into two equal halves. So that the one side of that circle will be equal to the other side of the circle. That is a diameter. Another thing we need to understand is radius. And radius simply refers to the distance from the center of the circle. So if this is the center of this given circle, then the distance from the center of the circle to the circumference is whatever we are referring to as radius. So this is distance. So we are talking about radius as the distance from the center to the, to the circle itself. So we are having the center of the circle, if this is the center of my circle, to the circle. So that distance is whatever we are referring to as the radius. So another 
thing we need to understand is a code. Code, we are simply saying that it is a line interval that is connecting two points on a circle. So when you are having a line, it is connecting two points on that given circle. Then whatever we have is a code. This is a radius. We said that a line that is passing through, this is a diameter. So we are talking about another term, and that is a chord, and we are simply saying that a chord is that interval, line interval that is connecting two points on a circle. So another term that is used in when we are talking about a circle, we are talking about a, po a, a sector, and sector we are defining it as a portion of a circle enclosed by two radii and a portion of a circle. And this portion of a circle we are referring to it as an arc. So we are having a portion of a circle. What do we mean? So this is what we mean. That I have, this is a portion of a circle. Then that portion of a circle is enclosed by two radii. Radii is simply the plural of radius. So it is enclosed by two radii and a portion of a circle. So we are having a portion. This is the portion of the circle. So if this was the whole circle, if that was the whole circle, then I'm having a portion of the given circle that is enclosing, that is, being, is bringing about this given portion. So the portion that is enclosed by two radii and a part or a portion of a circle, some given section of a circle. This part of a circle or the portion of a circle is whatever we are referring to as an arc. So we have a portion of a circle and two radii that are enclosing the given part. This part is whatever we are referring to as a sector. So we have a sector. It has two radii and an arc, a portion of a circle that are enclosing the given part. Then whatever we have is a sector. So looking at that, if this was the original circle, then this will make up. This one is a smaller part. Then the remaining part of a circle is a bigger part. The smaller part of the given circle is referred to as a minor sector and this bigger part gives us a major sector. So we have a minor and major sector. Is this, the other part is still a sector because we are having a red, two radar and portion of a circle that have enclosed the given part. So it means that this is also a sector, this is a sector. But this one is a smaller part, this one is a larger part, so this gives it a minor sector, this gives it a major sector. Another term we need to understand when you are talking about circles is what is known as a segment.
we need to understand what a segment is. So this brings us back to what we talked about earlier, that is a chord. And we simply said that a chord is a line interval that is connecting two parts of a circle. So we have that line interval that is connecting the two parts of a circle. Then this is our chord. We are talking about a segment and we are saying that it is uh, an area that is cut off by the cord. So if this is the area that has been cut off by the cord, then this is whatever we are referring to as a segment. That is our segment. So that area that is cut off by the cord is what we are referring to as the segment. Tangent is another term that is used when we are talking about circles. So we are talking about a tangent and we are simply saying that it is a line that touches the circle at only one point. That however much you try and lengthen that given line, it will not cross any other part on a circle but at only one point of this given circle. So this is what I mean. That if this is my circle, then I have a point on the circle where this line is touching the given point. So it has only passed at only one point of the circle. Then this is what we are referring to as a tangent. One property about a tangent that we need to know is that a tangent and a radius will als always meet at 90 degrees. So if that is my radius, where the point at which the tangent touches the circle and the radius, they will meet at 90 degrees. So tangent and radius are perpendicular to one another. So that the radius, if I try and get the radius and the point at which the tangent touches the circle, then they will meet at 90 degrees. So from there, then it is much easier for us to work out the circumference of this given circle. And before we look at the circumference of the given circle, then we have this whatever we are talking about as the pi, as the term, the last term that we are going to look at before we start calculating the circumference of the given circle. So pi
So we are saying that pi is a constant numerical value and is an irrational number. So whatever we are simply saying when we are talking about the irrational number, we are simply saying if you try and get this number as a fraction, then it is a bit difficult for us to get it. And at the same time, if we try and express it as a decimal, then you are having a continuous decimal that has no end. So we are j just having, if you try and find on the calculator, we get 22 divided by 7 from the calculator, then you find that the calculator is giving you a very long digit that is not ending. The number, if you try and divide 22 divided by 7, you're going to get a very long digit, a very long decimal that is not coming to an end. So that is why we are saying that it is a constant numerical value and it is an irrational number. So some basic information about the pi. We are saying that pi is that constant that is relating the diameter and the circumference of the given circle. So it is being used all over the world by mathematicians to calculate the circumference of the given circle. So Egyptians estimated that the pi is a figure that is slightly greater than 3. It was slightly greater than 3 and they approximated it. They approximated the value of the pi, approximated our value of pi as three hundred and fifty six over eighty one, which gives us an approximate value in decimal as 3.16. This is according to the Egyptians. Then The Indians used pi as 339 over 108, which is approximately 3.139 as the value of the pi.
We are talking about this mathematician called Archimedes of Syracuse. He estimated the value of pi to be that the value of pi was greater than 223 over 71, but it was less than 22 over 7. So according to Archimedes, that the value of pi was greater than 223 over 71, but it was less than 22 over 7. So when this is worked out, So, according to the Chinese mathematician, he then approximated that the value of pi is closely to is close to 335 over 113, which gives us 3.1415929. This is to this is to seven decimal places. So we are having that this Chinese mathematician then said that the value of pi is close to 3.1415929. So from there, before the coming of calculators, then our pi was then worked out as a fraction and the pi was taken to be 22 over 7. So being worked out as a fraction before the coming of the calculators, our, the pi was used as 22 over 7. So those are some of the approximations of pi that we have. And from the calculation, we'll discover that our pi is approximately 3. So we are having a range of 3. We have you've looked at several cases and we've seen that when you get the value of pi from the Egyptian, they had 3 point. From the Chinese, we have 3 point. From the other calculations, all the other calculations that we've done, we discover that our pi is approximately 3. So using this pi, we now need to get the circumference of our given circles. So can we just proceed and now find out how do we get circumference of a circle given the pi and the diameter of the circle. So we are to calculate the circumference of the circles and we've been given the approximated pi in each case. The first case, the approximated pi is 3, so we are to use our pi as 3. The second case, our approximated pi is 22 over 7. So we need to get the circumference of the given circles. How do we get the circumference? Circumference is given by pi d. Circumference is given by pi d. 
So that means our pi in this case we've been given is 3. So we are using the approximated pi of 3. So that means 3 multiplied by the diameter and our diameter in this case is 10. So 3 times 10 gives us 30 centimeters. So that means the diameter of this given of the given circle is 30 centimeters. On the other side, we are having a radius of 14 centimeters. We say that a radius is that distance from the center to the circle. So this distance is the radius. One thing we need to keep in mind is that the relationship between diameter and radius, the diameter is twice the radius. Term, diameter is twice the radius. So in this case, when we need to find the perimeter of a circle and we've been given the radius, then it means our circumference will be given by 2 pi r, where r is the radius. You are saying that to get this diameter, we said that our circumference is pi d. That is the pi multiplied by the diameter. But we've been given the radius, and we are saying that diameter is twice the radius. So that is why we are having 2r. The 2r is simply representing the diameter. So this will mean I have 2. We've been told to use a pi of 22 over 7. So 2 times 22 over 7. Our radius is 14. 7 into 7 once, 7 into 14, 2. So we have 2 times 22, which is 44. 44 times 2 gives us 88 centimeters. So that means that the perimeter of that given circle is 88 centimeters using a pi of 22 over 7. In case we are having to use a calculator to solve the given question. So we are using our calculator to solve this. So we are to find the circumference. The question is we are required to find the circumference and give our value to two decimal places. So we are giving the value to two decimal places. We are using a calculator to find the circumference of the given circle and rounding off our value to two decimal places. So this means that the first figure we have, we have a circle. Our radius that we've been given is 2 millimeters. So we have a radius of 2 millimeters. Then we need to get the circumference. And you're saying that circumference is given by pi d or 2 pi r in cases whereby we've been given the radius. So in this case, we have the radius. So circumference is 2 pi r. So 2 pi r Calculating the circumference, this means that I have 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by r, which is our radius, that is 2 millimeters. So that will mean I have 2 multiplied by pi times 2, so that...
it gives us 12.5714 the number is still going on but we are told to round off our figure to two decimal places so i'm having one two looking at the figure in the third decimal place it is a figure that is less than five so it simply we simply ignore those figures so that we have 12.57 our units we are using millimeters so it means our circumference will be 12.57 millimeters we have a circle of radius 18 meters so a circle of radius 18 meters we are finding the circumference you're saying circumference is 2 pi r so that means that i have 2 times pi times 18 so that 2 times pi times 18 2 times pi times 18 so we have 2 times pi gives us 113.1428.5714 the figure is still going on so what we do is we need to round off our figure to two decimal places so we have one two the number in the third decimal place is two and two is a figure that is less than five so it has no impact on our second figure so that means that we have 113.14 the units we are having are meters so that means that the circumference of that given circle is 113.14 so the next part We still have the same question, but now we have a diameter that is seven kilometers. So a diameter that is seven kilometers. We are finding the circumference, and you are saying circumference is given by pi d. So our value of pi, we are using a calculator. So that means I have pi multiplied by 7. So the value of pi times 7, so that Pi divided by 7 gives us 22. We were to give our answer to two decimal places. So that means we have 22.00 kilometers. So that is the calculation of that pi. 
using the calculators. So still another circle, but now with a diameter of five centimeters, we are using our calculator so that circumference is given by pi d. So this means I have pi times five. So what is the value of pi times five? Two two decimal places. We are getting 15.71 Two eight, the figure is still going on. So we have two eight five seven and so on. So that if we try and round off to two decimal places, we have one, two, four is less than five. So that means it has no effect on my one. So the figure remains fifteen point seven one centimeters. So the perimeter of that given circle which is which has a diameter of 5 centimeters is simply 15.75 15.71 i mean centimeters 15.71 centimeters so Whatever we've just been looking at, we are looking at pi and the circumference of a circle, and you're simply saying that circumference is given by pi d, and the pi varies depending with whatever you've been told to use. So in this case, we just want to find out what are the different values of pi when rounded off to different decimal places. So we are having our pi, then we are supposed to round it off to the various decimal places. The first decimal place, the first value, we are required to round it off to one decimal place. The second value, we are required to round it off to two decimal places. And the third, we are required to round it off to three decimal places. So we need to know what are the approximate values of pi to those given number of decimal places. So this means that our pi according to the calculator the pi is a very long digit that is not coming, the long decimal that is not coming to an end so we have 3.141159265 and so on. It is a very long digit. You can try and press it on your calculator and find out what values are you being given. So this value of 
the pi that we have from our calculator, we need to round it off to one decimal place. So one decimal place is simply one digit after the decimal place. Then find out after this decimal place, after this digit, the next digit, if it is five and above or below five. And we find that it is a four and a four is less than five. So it has no impact on that digit. So we have 3.1. To two decimal places, we count two digits after the decimal place. So we have one, two. Then look at the digit in the third decimal place. It is one. One is less than five. So that gives us 3.14. Then next to three decimal places, we are counting the digits. So we have one, two, three. That is three decimal places. Then we, look, we check the number or the digit in the fourth decimal place and we get that it is a five. So the five rounds off that digit up so that we have the one will be changed to two. Then we ignore the rest so that we will have 3.142. So those are the various values of pi to the given number of decimal places. So my the task I'm leaving you with is to try and test your memory and find out up to a maximum of how many decimal places can you get to memorize the value of pi. Try and memorize those values of pi to as many number of decimal places as you can, depending with what your memory can accommodate. So we've just been looking at perimeter. And we started by looking at perimeter of two-dimensional figures. And we simply said perimeter is simply the distance around the given figure. Then the next thing that we've looked at is the circumference of a circle. And we said that circumference of a circle is simply the distance around the circle. This distance around the circle is simply calculated by pi d. That is, the pi is the relationship between the circumference and the diameter of the given circle. Pi is simply a constant. It is a constant value that is an irrational number. So depending with whatever pi that you've been told to calculate in any given situation, if the question has directed the pi to be used, then ensure that you are following the instruction so that you use the pi according to the question. So that means that pi will be indicated in any given question, or if not indicated, you've been told to use a calculator or so on. So the pi is there on the calculator for our calculations. So with that, we come to a close of today's lesson, hoping that we can calculate perimeter and circumference of circles correctly. Thank you.